All right. Happy rainy day, guys. I saw uh, already, I saw Franny was wet. She went like out in the rain, which is awesome. But I heard it's only gonna last for the morning. It's gonna stop uh, later on this afternoon. That's what I heard. Anyway, uh, hope you have fun in the rain if you go out there. And time for some silly, I mean, uh, yeah, silly names, but also hello songs. All right, here we go. <laughs> And a one, and a two, and a... Everybody had a good weekend and everything. I know it's probably no fun being stuck at home all the time, but hopefully you get to go outside here and there. And now parks are open. Did you hear about this? You can go walking in the park now, but I think still playgrounds, not such a great idea, but walking in the park, totally fine. All right, um, which one should I do first? I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna try this one first. This one's pretty famous old time story. It's called the little engine that could. You ever heard of this story? I think I can. I think I can. I think that's from this one. I think that's from this one. Um, so this version here is written by, where are we now? Written by someone, oh, retold. So it's a very old story. When they say retold, that means it's so old. Usually there was, it existed before um, there were books. I don't know if it's that old though, but anyway. It's retold by Waddy Piper. Drawings done by Lauren Long. All right, here we go. Uh-oh. Looks like my, oh, it always seems like my camera's a little bit dirty. I'm gonna try to clean it really quick. Sorry about this, I'm gonna kind of wipe it down. Is that better? A little bit. All right, here we go. Oh, someone's trying to come in, sorry. Who's that, Stella? Hello, Stella. All right, um, here we go, start the book. Chug, 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 puff, 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 ding dong, ding dong, the little train rumbled over the tracks. She was a happy little train, for she had such a jolly load to carry. Her cars were, were filled full of good things for boys and girls. Ooh, I'm gonna need those glasses, it looks like. So let's see what's in this train, the good things for the boys and the girls. Oh, I already see some stuff that you can see kind of like, I don't know what those are, but 
animals, it looks like. There were toy, toy animals, giraffes with long necks, teddy bears with almost no necks at all. Look at the picture there. Uh, and even a baby elephant toy. Then there were dolls, dolls with blue eyes and yellow curls, dolls with brown eyes and brown bob heads, and the funniest little toy clown you ever saw. And I don't know why, but there are all the toys are floating in the air, just floating, floating. There's the clown, baby elephant, I guess, maybe. Horse on a wheels there. And there were cars full of toy engines, airplanes, tops, jackknives, jackknives, oh my goodness. Uh, picture puzzles, books, and every kind of thing boys or girls could want. But that was not all. There's even more than toys. There are, uh, some of the cars were filled with all sorts of good things for boys and girls to eat, like big golden oranges and red cheek apples, bottles of creamy milk for breakfast, fresh spinach for their dinners, Peppermint drops and lollipops for as for meals treat, yum, candy. The little train was carrying all these wonderful things to the good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain. She puffed along merrily. So she was a happy train. Then all of a sudden she stopped with a jerk. Just stopped. She simply could not go another inch. She tried and she tried, but her wheels were not turn, would not turn. And there's the engine and she looks kind of like either sick or sad. There's sort of a face there if you look, those are eyes. She's kind of drooping, kind of like the boo-boo lip a little bit, like mm -hmm, sort of kind of. And uh, let's see, what were all those good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain going to do without the wonderful toys to play with and the good food to eat? Oh, but if you see from way far away, there's another train coming. See it? Here comes a shiny new engine, said the funny little clown who jumped off the train. Let's ask, let's ask him to help us. So all the dolls and toys cried out together, please, new shiny engine, won't you pull our train over the mountain? Our engine is broken down and the boys and the girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. Oh shoot, more people want to come in. Sorry guys, let me, there we go. I don't like this new thing with the uh, Zoom. You gotta let everybody in one by one. I'm not sure how to fix that, but I'll work on it for next time. Uh, let's see, oh yeah. So they asked the engine for help because the girls and boys won't have any toys to play with or good food if we don't get over the mountain. But the shiny new engine just snorted, I pull you? I'm a passenger engine. That means a uh, um, train that pulls people. I have just carried a fine big train over the mountain with more cars than you ever dreamed of. My train had sleeping cars with comfortable berths. That means a, a kind of a... Sleeping car has a bed in the room. Okay. Hello, Anna. Anna. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, where? Oh, yeah, yeah. A dining car where white waiters bring whatever hungry people want to eat, and a parlor car in which people sit in soft armchairs and look out of big plate glass windows. I pull the likes of you, he said. Indeed not. So he says no. Why? Why did he say that? Look at him, he's kind of, those are his eyes and he's kind of grumpy looking. To me, that's like the face of the train, sort of kind of. And he's saying, no, I'm not gonna help you guys. And off he steamed to the roundhouse where engines live when they're not busy. How sad the little train and all the dolls and toys felt, they're very sad. Then the little cloud called out, the passenger engine is not the only one in the world. Here's another engine coming. A great big strong one. Let's ask, uh, let us ask him to help us. The little toy clown waved his flag and the big strong engine came to stop by. So another, uh, or came to a stop, I'm sorry. Another, uh, what do you call it? Train's coming. Please, oh please, big engine, cried all the dolls and toys together. Won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine is broken down. And the good little boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. And man, that is a big, 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 big train. 
And to me, it kind of looks like a whale, a little bit, because if you see, that's his eye right there. See his eye? Looks like a whale eye, sort of, kind of. Anyway, it's a train, though. Um, but the big, strong engine bellowed, I am a freight engine. I have just pulled a big train loaded with big machines over the mountain. These machines print books and newspapers for grown-ups to read. I am very important engine indeed. I won't pull the likes of you, never ever. He says, no. He says, I pull too big of things. You're too small. It's not, not good enough for me. That's what he's saying, which is not cool, really, if you think about it. Uh-oh, am I missing pages? Ooh, I gotta check these books before I read them, huh? And the freight engine puffed off indignantly to the road roundhouse as well. The little train and all the dolls were very sad. Cheer up, cried the little toy clown. The freight engine is not the only one in the world. Here comes another one. He looks very old and tired. But our train is so little, perhaps he could help us. Uh-oh, I think I might be missing. Oh, no, I'm not missing pages. Okay. Wait, where am I? Oh, yeah, here we go. So the little toy clown waved his flag, and the dingy, rusty old engine stopped. Please, kind engine, cried all, cried all the dolls and toys together. Won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine has broken down, and the boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. So here's the old train, he's very old. He even has like a monocle or something, it looks like. But the rusty old engine sighed and he said, like sighing is like, <sighs> and he says, I am so tired. I must rest my weary wheels. That means tired wheels. I cannot pull even so little a train as yours over the mountain. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. And he doesn't look so good. His wheels are not even round completely. They're kind of crooked. And off he rumbled to the roadhouse. Roundhouse, sorry, chugging, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. He won't do it. Well, he's saying he was, he wouldn't be able to do it. He couldn't, he's not saying no, I don't want to. He's saying no, I can't really, I don't think I can do it. Then indeed, the little train was very, very sad and the dolls and the toys were ready to cry because that's, how many trains is that? Three trains now they asked and they all said no, right? So they looked pretty sad there. But the little uh, clown called out, here's another engine coming, a little blue engine, a very little one, but maybe she will help us. And there's the little engine. Kind of a little like Thomas, sort of kind of, right? <clears throat> the very little engine came chug chugging merrily along. When she saw the toy, toy clown's flag, she stopped quickly. So she looks happy, she's like doo 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 doo, just going around all by herself, she's not pulling anything. What's the matter, my friends? She asked kindly. Oh, little blue engine, cried the dolls and toys. Will you pull us over the mountain? Our engine is broken down, and the good boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or good food to eat unless you help us. Please, please help us, little blue engine. So they're asking her the same thing, if, they, if she can help them. I'm not very big, said the little blue engine. They use me only for switching trains in the yard. <gasps> that is like Thomas. That's what he does, right? Anyway, she's one of those kind of trains, just switching over trains in the yard. I've never been over the mountain, she said, not ever. But we must get over the mountain before the children awake, said all the dolls and the toys. The very little engine looked up and saw the tears in the doll's eyes, and she thought of the good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain who would not have uh, any toys or food, good food unless she helped. Then she said, oh, someone's lost him again. Then she said, um, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And she hitched herself to the little train, she's gonna try it. So here, this is her thinking about her town on the other side there. She tugged and pulled and tugged and slowly, slowly, they started off, chug, 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 chug. She's going really slow at first. The toy clown jumped aboard and all the dolls and the toys began to smile and cheer. Yay, we're moving again, we're going, we're going. Thank you, little engine. Puff, puff, chug, chug, went the little engine. 
I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. There's a lot of I think I can on the page here, but this is all I think I can. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Up, 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 faster and faster and faster. The little engine climb. She's getting up a good head of steam, they call that. She's getting some speed for the hill. Until that last, well, did I warn you? Can I skip a page? No, 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 no. So she chug, chug, chugging until at last they reach the top of the mountain. There's the very top. And it even has a little snow on it. Pretty tall mountain. Uh oh, who's up? Oh, here comes Cora. Down in the valley lay the city. Hooray, hooray, cried the funny little clown and all the dolls and toys. The good little boys and girls in the city will be happy because you helped us, kind little blue engine. So we're coming back down into the town there. And the little blue engine smiled and seemed to say as she puffed steadily down the mountain, I thought I could, 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 I thought I could. And that is the end. She made it. Hmm, pretty cool. I'm not sure that's the best version of this story, but that's a pretty cool version. It's a very old story, so it's been rewritten a couple different times, I think. All right, what time do we got? Uh, ooh, I have like, yeah, I have time. I know I have time for a story. I'm trying to figure out if I have time for another uh, song. Hmm, maybe I'll wait till the end for the extra song. This one, pretty cool. This one's called Penny and Pup, and I'm not sure if I ever read read this before to the school kids, and but it is a real Shyland book. I don't know why I never picked it, but it's pretty cool. Penny and Pup, and I can't remember which one's which. We will find out. Oh, here's a beginning page with no words, just to set up the scene. Very pretty uh, backyard, it looks like, in the house there. In a pond, a lot of flowers. Okay, title page, Penny and Pup, written by Linda Jennings, illustrated, that means drawings done by Jane Chapman. Okay, I think I've heard that name before. All right, here we go. Ooh, it's a big book. I gotta scoot back a little bit. On the first night in her new home, Penny, oh, wait, wait a minute. Does that how it starts? Are you kidding me? I guess it does. On the first night in her new home, so this starts out right away where she already moved. She's in a new house. And the first night, Penny, who I think is that brown dog, had whined and howled and scratched at the door. <laughs> she wanted to be in their bed. I don't know if you guys, any of you have dogs, but sometimes they like to sleep in your own bed, right? Um, so her family gave her pup to be her friend. This is pup. It's like a stuffed animal um, toy dog. Pup was all squashy and floppy, and he lived in Penny's basket. She chewed and loved him to bits, so she really likes this toy, the toy dog. She likes to chew on it and love it up. One day, Penny and Pup went out into the garden, and Henry the cat was sitting in the yard. Oh, Henry the cat, funny. Hello, Penny, said Henry. Where are you going? Penny put Pup down and gave him a little kit lick. For a walk, said Penny, just Pup and me. Can I come too, asked Henry. Pup only wants me for a friend, she said. Sorry. And picking Pup up again, she trotted down the path. So she said, no, I'm the cat you cannot come with. Which is really hmm, not super friendly, right? It's like kind of like excluding, I would say. Oh, and these come up later in the stories. Look at there's some little mice there. By the back gate, Betsy the rabbit was sitting in her hutch, which is another name for just a house, cage house, where you keep the rabbit so it doesn't run away. Penny, she cried, come and talk to me. I'm lonesome. I'm all stuck in this cage all by myself. Pup doesn't want to stop to talk. We're going for a walk. Just Pup and me, said Penny. Sorry. So she didn't stop to play with that animal either, not super friendly. And off she went with Pup's long legs trailing behind her. So she's dragging this other stuffed animal with her. On the edge of the lawn sat Matt, the fox cub. 
Come and play with me, he barked. Rawr, rawr. So a fox wants to play with a dog? Interesting. Pup doesn't like playing with foxes. We're going for a walk. Just pup and me, said Penny. Sorry. Wow, she just really only wants to be with her stuffed animal, huh? So Penny turned her back on Matt and walked the pup across the yard to the garden shed. Ooh, oh, maybe that was the picture. I don't know. We'll see. Under the shed was a big space. So it's the kind of house that's built a little bit off of the ground, not right on top of the ground. Penny put pup down. I'm sorry. Penny put pup down gently and sniffed. It smelled exciting in there, like mice and old bones, <laughs> which I guess is exciting to a dog. Let's go exploring, pup, said Penny. And pushing pup in front of her, she squeezed her head under the shed. So she's going to go explore. So she pushes the, this dog can't move around on its own, right? It's like, it's a stuffed animal. So she's pushing it in under the house. This is under the house. Out there is outside. This is the house, basically the floor of the house. So they're going underneath to explore. See, here's the outside of the shed there. Oh, running out of time. 10 minutes to go. Okay, boom. Penny tried to follow Pup, and she wriggled and squeezed and squeezed and wriggled, but she was too big to crawl into the space. She couldn't get into that space where she just pushed her friend, the stuffed animal, and she can't get in now. Pup, Pup, she called, but of course, Pup didn't say anything because she's not alive. Penny tried to pull Pup out again, but she couldn't reach him. She couldn't even see him. So now she lost her favorite toy and I think she's gonna get upset. Penny sat down and cried. Oh, there she is, she's howling. Oh, uh, what would she do without Pup as her best friend? She's very upset. And what would Pup do without her? What's gonna happen? Matt the fox cub heard her crying and came trotting across the yard. I'll help you, he said. But though he wriggled and squeezed, and squeezed and wriggled, he could not reach Pup either. So he's reaching, he, at least he can get a little farther under, right? There's his paw, but he just can't quite touch the stuffed animal there. So the fox trying to help didn't work. Henry the cat was sitting on the fence, and he saw Matt trying to rescue Pup. So he said, I'll help you, he said. But Henry was a fat cat, and he couldn't even fit his head under the shed. Oh, he's a big cat. He couldn't get in either. He's too big. He's too big. He's big as a fox. <clears throat> oh, and I see little mice there. Something happens with the mice, guys. Along bounced Betty the rabbit. She was feeling happy because she had escaped from her hutch. She got out of her cage. I'll help you, she said. And since Betsy was a small rabbit, she was able to wriggle and squeeze and squeeze and wriggle right under the shed. But when she got under there, Pup wasn't there anymore. What? She got under and Pup is gone. Who took Pup? Where did Pup go? Pup can't walk on her own, right? Pup is not alive, as far as I know. Matt and Henry and Betsy all helped Penny to look for Pup. They searched behind the shed. They searched in the flower beds. They even searched in the pond, just in case Pup had fallen in. But Pup was not anywhere to be found. So they cannot find the Pup. They're very getting nervous, I'm pretty sure. And then suddenly, dot, 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 there he was. Pup was in the hedge. He's in the bushes. <clears throat> A family of mice had dragged him there. They had to be pretty strong. To, he's pretty big. I don't know how they did that. Dragged him there, and now they were all curled up together, fast asleep on Pup. So they were under the house. I don't know if you remember that part. Let me go back really quick. Uh, yeah, here they are. They're under the house. See when Pup when Pup goes under there, and so they used Pup, the uh, stuffed animal, for a bed, and they're very cozy sleeping together. Penny looked at Pup, and she looked at the mice. And it didn't seem right to disturb them, like to wake up the cute little sleeping family. And the friend said, or Henry said, now you could play with us, meowed Henry. Yes, do play with us, cried Matt and Betsy together. You don't mind, do you, Pup? Asked Penny, but Pup didn't say anything, so I guess he doesn't mind. 
<clears throat> All right, I will play with you, said Penny. And she raced and chased and chased and raced all around the garden with her new friends, um, the cat and the fox and the bunny. Penny was having such a fun time that she forgot about Puck. She's just having a good old time playing, playing. When it was time to go home, Penny remembered poor old Puck laying in the hedge and went back to fetch him. So it's time to go home. So she's, uh-oh, my internet connection is unstable. I hope I'm not breaking up. The bi uh, so she goes back to find Pup, right? And the baby mice were still asleep, but their mother was awake. And the mom is a talking mouse, and she says, Pup makes such a cozy bed for my baby, she said. May we borrow him for a while? Pup did seem very happy with the little mice taking care of them. And Penny said, I think Pup would like to stay with your mouse family, Penny said. I always thought he needed a few more friends. And that is the end. Oh, she let Pup be a, a ma mouse bed. Oh, look, and here's a, a bunch of other, I knew I heard of this person before. <clears throat> here's a bunch of other books this person, or I think this person, or different, no, different people. Never mind. I think we had this one, the Nutty Nut Chase. Anyway, that's the end of that one. And yay for Pup and Penny. Okay. I only have four minutes left, so I don't have. I don't think I have time for an extra song. I'm gonna sing a goodbye song to everybody. Maybe I'll mute everybody if you want to like sing along or something. <laughs> there you go. Unmute. You can sing along with me if you want. Maybe, uh, <laughs> oh, and there's new people in there. <laughs> Cora and Stella. Let me get the I'm not. Is Stella still here? Mommy, can I make a Here we go. That's enough. Ready? That's on. Cora.